Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to talk about why you should never, ever, 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 ever co-witness a pistol red dot sight to the iron sights. Pistol optic backup sights that happen to be suppressor height, so I can use them through the optic window in the event that my optic goes down or I'm practicing it, or for whatever reason. If I just want to shoot iron sights that day, I can turn my optic off or whatever. They're suppressor height because they have to clear the body of the optic. Anybody who shot suppressor height sights will tell you that the point of aim, point of impact changes from standard height when you put suppressor height on. But that's kind of an aside to the main problem that we have with some people buying these things and then not really understanding the red dot well enough to, to use it as effectively as they probably could if they took five minutes to get correct information. The other problem is there's so much bad information out there that I have to make videos like this, which isn't a big deal because that's the whole reason I do this for a living. This is something I'm passionate about, something I want to do. So if you did adjust the red dot in your optic to sit on the top of your front sight or be bisected by your front sight, the lollipop, or just sit on top, keep in mind that you've now zeroed your optic incorrectly. So first, a really basic uh, understanding of what we're talking about. If I'm shooting with iron sights, um, proper technique for iron sights is to align them on the horizontal plane of the gun and to have equal light and equal height across the top, flush tucked in, not too low, not too high, not too left, not too right, right in there in that rear notch, and then I place that over my desired point of impact. I may have to account for point of aim, point of impact differences inside or outside of the zero distance of those sights or the point blank distance of those sights, uh, depending on how you want to, want to talk about it. Uh, and then I shoot, and that's how I use iron sights. When I use a red dot, I focus on the target. I look through the red dot and focus on the target. Now, there is an alternate method for extreme distances on red dots where you could focus on the, the red dot. It's something that some people advocate, not something that I advocate, but it is a technique that's out there and it has some viability to it. But for general purpose handgun distance shooting, I'm going to look through that red dot. The red dot is zeroed independently of the iron sights, because if it wasn't, then it would kind of be a little visual clutter, visual confusing when I actually went to shoot, because I would be inside my iron sight sight picture while using my dot, which is something I don't necessarily want to deal with. The whole reason the red dot is advantageous is it allows me to stay target focused, and it lets me see all the way around my quote unquote front sight post, whereas with iron sights, it's not something that I can do. So the optic needs to be zeroed independently of the irons. And of course the question may come up and somebody may be asking it right now, well, why does it matter? Why would I need to zero or why should I zero the optic independent of the iron sights? Well, the iron sights exist on the same horizontal plane of the firearm and they're used in a definitively different way. The red dot should be zeroed from the ocular lens to the eye to the target. To a set distance, the distance can be arbitrary depending on what you're trying to use your handgun for. I generally use a 25 yard slash 25 meter. Uh, I, I do it in meters. Uh, 25 meter zero distance uh, and that allows me to have less point of aim point of impact variance inside of reasonable handgun distances if you're zeroing adjusting slaving if you will the red dot to your iron sights you're literally zeroing your optic for the distance of the, of the front sight which can be problematic as distance increases a demonstration so this particular gun, Glock 17, uh, I zeroed the dot to the front sight. Now keep in mind, zeroing to the front sight means I'm, and in this case, I bisected the dot, literally split it in half, and I centered it as much as I could on the post. And then I shot at 3, 7, 15, and 25 yards. I didn't use holdovers at all, so at 3, uh, we're, we're good. Uh, it's point of aim, point of impact. Moving back to 5, we're also staying pretty reasonable as far as placement is, but it is starting to climb a little bit. Once we get back to 15, you start to see uh, more of a dramatic climb in the shot placement. Now, I fired all these standing. Uh, I didn't have a ransom rest or anything like that to use, and I didn't have the ability to support the gun and bench rest it. So everything was shot standing, so there is some subjectivity to it because it's based on my skill level at these distances on that day with that gun, so on and so forth. Once we get out to 25, we see uh, kind of a considerable thing happen. One, the shot group raises uh, dramatically. Uh, and another thing we see is the shot group spreads out horizontally. Now, you might think that this is shooter error, and it could potentially be that, uh, but it's also the fact that the red dot is zeroed both elevation and windage to the front sight while I have it in the rear sight. And that's kind of a complicated task to complete. And why this occurs is because even though the dot projects larger than the front sight, it's actually smaller than the front sight. 
So when I'm actually using it in the proper technique I'm supposed to use, which means I'm, I'm aimed out and I'm just focusing on the dot, uh, I've got more horizontal deviation in there than I would have otherwise if I actually zeroed at the target distance versus at the front sight distance. Now it's quick and easy to slave your red dot to your irons, no big deal. But the only time it's going to be accurate to that zero is if you're using it in conjunction with your iron sights and a quote unquote co-witness. The biggest problem here, of course, is the disambiguation of terminology. Does co-witness mean I can just see my sights through my optic window, or does it mean my dot itself is slaved to my iron sights? If you're just talking about co-witness in regards to I can see my irons through my optic, then co-witnessing is fine and it's been done since red dots have been a thing. If you're talking about slaving your red dot to your irons, just stop it. Just don't. Don't do that at all. Zero it independently. And here's why. This gun is zeroed at 25 meters, even though I'm going to be shooting it in yards for demonstration because everybody in the America on the internet loves yards for some reason. Um, I'm going to shoot at the same distances, 3, 7, 15, and 25. At 3, and again, I'm not holding over. I'm going for that black point of aim on my, my, uh, my, my target there inside my A zone. That's my point of aim for every distance. Uh, shooting a little, little low uh, because I didn't hold over, and there is that mechanical offset, even though it is... 0.7 to 0.9, uh, looking at the dot in, in conjunction with the, uh, the the bore axis, but it still exists. It's still something we have to take into account. But for the purpose of this, I didn't hold over. And again, uh, if my goal was to hit that black dot, mission accomplished. Uh, at five, or I'm sorry, at seven, uh, we're still holding really good. We just stacked them right on top of each other. When we get out to 15, uh, there's a little bit more deviation, and we're leaning a little to the left. Again, shooting this standing, unsupported. Uh, I'm still getting really, really good consistent hits. You can't see a dramatic difference between 3 to 15. Once we get it back 25, this is where it really starts to shine. That's kind of like the bright line distance for a lot of shooters when it comes to handgun distances. But even at 25 uh, yards, um, I'm doing remarkably better than I would have if I'd slaved the red dot to my iron sights and then used it in that way. So here's our two targets compared. This is our slaved to irons. And this is our independent zero at 25 meters shot at 3, 7, 15, 25 yards, respectively. Uh, there's some naysayers, and this, this is somewhat of a valid argument. There isn't a significant difference in the two groups until we get out to 25. And, of course, that can be blamed subjectively, uh, subjectively uh, on the shooter. Um, but that really comes down to are you willing to accept proper technique, or are you going to make excuses for not knowing something, uh, and doubling down on someone giving you the correct information. If you want to double down on doing things kind of the lazy way, really. I mean, slaving the red dot to your irons is kind of the laziest way you can accomplish things. Then that's fine, but just keep in mind that your performance is going to suffer because of it, because that's not the way the red dot is supposed to be used, and that's not the most advantageous way to use it. Yes, you can use it incorrectly and shoot accurately. I can take this whole group right here, move it down a little bit, and I've got really good A zone hits all day long until I get back to 25. Meanwhile, over here, I've got A-zone hits all day long, and I really have to account for the fact that I zeroed my optic, well, incorrectly. You may be happy with the accuracy you could get if you slaved your red dot to your irons, uh, and you may not see a significant difference in my two groups, but keep in mind, uh, I shoot for a living, uh, and I shoot red dots almost exclusively now. I only shoot iron sights if I'm going to teach an iron sight class. I kind of brush up on them, because a red dot actually does make you a more proficient iron sight shooter, but that's kind of a separate topic. Uh, I'm used to shooting pistols with red dots, so even when I zeroed it incorrectly, I'm still able to maintain a degree of proficiency. The size of the dot, the size of the iron sights, the size of the gun, your actual sight radius on the gun, uh, and what I mean by that is the actual distance of the front sight from the optic itself, because that matters into that zero technique, because uh, you're literally zeroing to the front sight, which is, you know, inches. Um, those things matter. My advice to you, uh, if you do have your gun zeroed in that way because you just didn't know any better, and that's fine. Ignorance is okay, we don't want to be stupid. If someone gives you the correct information and you choose to ignore it, that makes you, well, consciously incompetent. And, and nobody wants to be that. You want to be the knowledgeable shooter because we're all supposed to be on the same team. So it seems like any time I've had this conversation with someone who actually had their red dot slaved to their irons, they got super, super defensive about it. And some of the viewers might be like that right now. Keep in mind that I'm trying to help you. Uh, and even though there's some sarcasm that sneaks in by time and time again, uh, that's based out of frustration, and that's something I'm working on as a personal level. Uh, sometimes sarcasm from frustration just comes out, uh, and it's, it's unfortunate. But if we were on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I wouldn't give that to you. It's just kind of a video format thing. 
if someone's giving you the correct information, it's verifiably correct information, because by all means, don't just listen to me. Go out there and seek other people's opinions who know, who are knowledgeable about red dots on handguns and, and listen to them. Um, then just make the change and then share the knowledge with other shooters who are making the same mistake. At a personal level, we can always help each other. It's very difficult for me, more or less you may know who I am, but I may be a perfect stranger to you other than the fact you know who I am and I have a YouTube channel and I teach and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it may be problematic for you to ingest uh, information contradictory to what you previously believed. That's what we call cognitive dissonance. You've got to accept the fact that the new information needs to overwrite the old information and then you have to go back and change the way you've been doing things, which is unfortunate. But in shooting, we've all been there. We've all been doing something wrong and someone came along and helped us. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Because slaving your red dot to your iron sights is, it's incorrect. And if you know it's incorrect and you keep doing it, then, well, that's just stupid. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.